Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss this example. So here we have two matrix spaces xd and yd dash and we have two functions f and g both are defined from x to y. So the most important thing is f and g are continuous functions and with the help of that we have to prove the set f which is defined in this way is a closed set. f is a collection of all points of x such that f of x is equal to g of x. One more thing we have to prove here but first of all we will focus on the first part that means we have to prove the set f is closed. How to prove the set is closed? We can prove its complement is open or we can prove that f is equal to f bar. Then also we can say f is closed. So let us do this thing. Let me mention that is to prove that f is equal to f bar. Let me write the definition of f bar. So f bar is equal to f union f dash. So f bar is formed by taking union of f and f dash that means set of limit points of f. So clearly by definition, so let me mention clearly that f is subset of f bar. So let me call it as 1. What we have to prove? These two sets are equal. So the best way is to prove this thing is first set is subset of second and the second set is subset of first. So half part is done here. We have proved f is subset of f bar. By definition directly we got it. So let us prove that f bar is subset of f. Now to prove that f bar is subset of f. So now the question is how to prove the first set is subset of second. Let me mention here how to prove a subset of b. So we have to take one point from a and we have to prove that it is in b then we can say a subset of b. So the same technique I will use here. So let us take one point p belongs to a bar getting so p belongs to a bar so therefore we have one thing that is if you have point from a bar then there exists a sequence xn of points of f such that such that xn converges to p let me show here suppose this is set f bar getting suppose this is set f bar and we have some point here then we get a sequence x1 x2 x3 and so on which are elements of f and that sequence converges to this point p so that's why we could write it okay but the most important thing let me write here 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 xn belongs to f we have taken sequence of points of f that means each xn is in f for all n belongs to set of natural number. As xn belongs to f definitely it will satisfy the definition of f and the definition of f says f of xn is equal to g of xn since each xn is an element of f. So by definition of f we get this one so let me call it as 1 okay. So let me remove this part so we will have some more space to write okay just a minute okay see what we have we have f from x to y is a continuous function they have mentioned f is a continuous function and xn converges to p See actually xn is a sequence of points of f but see f is in x let me show here. So this is our set f bar getting uh, and point p and we have a sequence xn x1 x2 and so on they are converging to p but basically we are doing all these thin things in a matrix space xd so x1 x2 and so on xn is a sequence of points of x which converges to p and f from x to y is a continuous function so by sequential criteria of continuity we can definitely write f of xn converges to f of p by sequential criteria we get this one getting so f is continuous and xn converges to p then f of xn converges to f of p see we have one more thing okay actually we have two informations f from 
x to y is continuous and g is from x to y that is also continuous. So we have used just single information. Let us use the second information also. So we have the second information is g from x to y is continuous getting and again we have the same thing xn converges to p. So again by sequential criteria we can write g of xn converges to g of p getting. But see in one already we have stated f of xn and g of xn both are equal. So we can replace this g of xn by f of xn since both are equal it converges to g of p this is 3 and let me mention from 1. So we want some more space to write make a screenshot of it then we will go further. So what we are getting here see f of xn converges to f of p f of xn converges to g of p. But see f of xn is a convergent sequence then it will converge to a unique limit. So therefore that limit of f of xn f of p and g of p must be equal. So let me mention that thing from 2 and 3 and by uniqueness of limit uniqueness of limit of convergent sequence what we get that limit f of p and g of p must be equal getting so f of p is equal to g of p that means point p satisfies the definition of f so we can say p is an element of f so we started with p belongs to a bar and we proved that p belongs to f so therefore we can write therefore what can we write here uh, see f bar subset of f so let me call it as double star you can call it as star so from star and double star so star means what star means f is subset of f bar which we had written clearly so that is star and this is double star so we can write from star and double star f is equal to f bar so therefore we can declare f is a closed set getting so in this way we proved the set f is a closed set so now one more task we have that if f is dense then f is equal to g so let us do that thing also just make a screenshot of it so let us prove the second part so now the second part is they have mentioned f is dense consider f is dense so when we say the set is dense if closure of f is the entire matrix space x then we say the set is dense so what we have f bar is equal to x but just now we proved f is closed the set f is closed that is f is equal to f bar getting so f bar is equal to f and f bar is equal to x so therefore we can write f is equal to x so this f is entire matrix space x that means all elements of x satisfies this condition so therefore by definition of f set f we can write f of x is equal to g of x for all x belongs to the matrix space x that is f is equal to g on x so in this way we proved both functions are equal so make a screenshot of it then we will stop thank you see you